Caddis Maximus here. This is actually, I'm doing <laughs> some of the Kai Wheats video. I'm actually, I had three of their products. They sent me this like a year or two ago and it had some molding issue and with this button and you had to press it with like two fingers. And I finally took it apart and it just didn't get molded properly. So I had to razor out a little chunk of like a booger of silicone and then I had to add like an extra little pad under it. Uh, for this to finally want to register and so I told them that I said you know the button doesn't work and they made a little video showing them they didn't care about it so I just didn't talk to them again until they offered to send me a EMF meter which will be the next video and then I asked if they would send me that clamp meter too because I didn't want to do just one cheap little thing so they did so anyway, I figured I ought to do this meter because now that they've discontinued it for the KM602, and I think they may have taken some of the feedback. I probably wasn't the only person who had button problems because they kind of changed up the buttons uh, on the revised edition. But this is the same as the AI Astro. There's a bunch of the companies that were rebranding this particular meter, and it's actually, you know, it's pretty cool. As far as functionality, and it actually seems to be more sensitive and it seems that this didn't come out of the same factory as that previous Kai Wheats uh, clamp meter because it works more consistently, particularly things like if we take the non-contact voltage tester here, we can actually see that it actually works more reliably. And, but it's still kind of based on the same chip where it automatically just sweeps through, in this case, volts, resistance, and continuity test does diode test one of the things about these uh the chinese you know little processors that they have for these is not that it's cheap for two rms and this thing i think they are closing out for cheap like 30 bucks or something like that free shipping and it's pretty righteous it has a really easy to read screen and it has just like these incredible ranges so it can do capacitance and it has this huge, see, it can do a thousandth of a nanofarad. So it can read a one picofarad capacitor all the way up to ma massive, 100,000 microfarads or 100 millifarads, uh, which is crazy. That's a huge capacitor, even at low voltages, a 100,000 microfarad capacitor, even at for a 12-volt capacitor, is still going to be a pretty big can. The bigger the capacitor, the longer it takes for one of these meters to charge. So if you're measuring small capacitors, it will register it fast, seconds. If you're measuring giant capacitors, it could take a minute or two minutes just to be able to charge the capacitor and actually get a measurement. Might as well uh, give this a shot. Look, an American-made capacitor, which unbelievable. It's a motor capacitor, 161 to 193. Before I forget, I kind of like these because they have these lights. So if I go into the capacitor mode, uh, it will blink the lights to where the connectors actually need to be plugged in, which I think is a pretty cool feature. And if you plug it in to, say, the milliamps, it automatically forces the meter over into that mode so you don't screw things up. Those kind of features I do like. And it even has a little button there, so it will tell you that the lead is not in the right spot. This is a high voltage capacitor. Let's see how long it takes for it to come up with a measurement here. One hundred and sixty three. So this is on the lower end of its range. One hundred and sixty one, but technically within specification is it consistent with that at least with the same units probably has a little bit of charge in it now yeah continuity test uh, not the it's okay I wouldn't say the most responsive but it's definitely serviceable we do have a bar graph. The point of the bar graphs is if you have something that's changing uh, more rapidly, then you can see the bar graph has a relative mode. The select is if you're going into, well, go back to that. 
It is what switches between DC or AC. It's kind of funny they actually say two RMS when you go into the AC mode. Um, it is a 10,000 count, so it just give you, gives you more numbers. As we can see with the AC voltage, if we're measuring under 10 volts, uh, it will give us millivolt resolution. And what it means is uh, part of how electronic measuring instruments work is part of is like the sensitivity and the it's aspects of the circuit so many are like 6000 count or 4000 count and that means that there's limitations to the resolutions when you're it's just harder for it to see or for lower count units to see differences relative to a, a much larger number that it's measuring and so the higher counts just mean better circuitry and so 4,000 count, what this would read is 3.999. And if you went up to 4 volts, the decimal place would move over and you'd lose some of your resolution. A 10,000 count, and it says 999, um, means that the, all these digits can display 9. They don't turn over at 4 or at 6 or something like that. And so that's another advantage. Anyway, this isn't so much about this specific... Whoop. Kaiweitz unit, but I think it's better than their clamp meter. The clamp meter uh, has some reading consistency issues. It's generally within its 4%, but it was just annoying how it was just a lot more sensitive and inconsistent than the fluke was. But this meter is uh, much more decent for 30 bucks. And I was just talking about that last Kaiweitz video. You're getting so much um, for so little money because of those cheap chips i mean it's amazing i mean oh and it'll do and the resistance it'll do up to 100 million ohms which is like a huge i mean you used to have to buy a special dedicated resistance meter to make a reading of 100 million ohms of resistance i mean that is a heck of a lot of resistance i mean if you grab the probes between your fingers it can drop to a few hundred thousand ohms so you know uh that kind of stuff i mean and once again you know 30 years ago if you were to try to, you could buy a meter that would meet these stats, but they, they would have been a few hundred bucks. So um, inflation is not linear across all product categories. Many product categories you end up getting uh, nowadays just exponentially more value for your dollar, especially on something like this, which you can find for 30 bucks. You probably find one on eBay for 10 or 20 bucks, and it's a great beater. Super easy to read screen, non-contact voltage tester, and frequency and duty cycle up to like 10 megahertz. So anyway, I make videos every day, so sometimes I make videos about cheesy stuff too. Nobody clicks on them, but that's fine. As long as it has a few, a few people are interested in it or helps a few people out, then uh, it's more than good enough for me. That's why I continue to make videos like I do after all these years. Um, even though most times it still <laughs> costs me money every month rather than actually really making anything. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.